What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scooby and Renny. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now here behind me, I've got both my full face mask, I've got my comm unit, and if you can't tell, I'm fixing to head out and do another salvage job. This is kind of a special salvage job for us because we're filming another episode for Deep Water Salvage. But I'm not really going to show you that because you're going to see that when that episode airs. But what I want to make tonight's video on is how we prepare for these jobs. And I'm not talking about how the team prepares. I'm talking about how I, as an individual diver for our salvage team, prepares for the job. The first thing I'm going to do, of course, is go through all my equipment. I'm going to go through my BCD, my regs, my dry suit, my fins. Go through all and I'm going to inspect it. And I'm actually going to inspect it the night before the actual job to see if I need to replace any parts. Now, if it's not something that I do a lot of then of course I may inspect it a week or so in advance to give me plenty of time to buy parts in my line of work I have plenty of spare parts laying around I even have two full face masks here I can swap back and forth if I need so preparing the night before works perfect for me but I'm going to walk you through the steps of how I prepare for a job and talk about each individual item that I'm going to be using primarily for this video just my lights my cameras and my mask and even my regulators and show you how much detail goes into preparing for an underwater salvage job so guys, usually when I do a gear check the night before or even a, a couple of days before a job, I always start head to toe. So I'll start with, of course, my full face mask. I'll work my way down. Next will be, of course, the regulator, the BC, all the way down to my dry suit, fins, everything that I need. And I want to make sure that I do a proper gear check so that everything's in good working order. I also want to make sure I have a spare of everything. So I have two full face masks, two dry suits, two reg sets, two tanks, anything that I need, I've got a spare so that I don't have to worry throughout my dives what happens if my equipment goes down i'm gonna run you through a brief little um, checklist that i do before a salvage job and show you just how easy it can be done and we'll talk about why it's important but starting head to toe of course i'm gonna start with my full face mask now i do have two here one is a backup it is set up identical to this so if something happens to this and it goes down i can immediately snap this one onto the reg set and i'm off and going again but starting at the top we're going to start with my camera so the first thing i do is make sure all the batteries I've got several batteries for my camera I want to make sure that they're charged up I also want to make sure that the o-ring's good in the housing I want to make sure I got my little moisture muncher and I want to make sure all the cards are formatted and ready to go so that means not only are they formatted to the camera that they're cleared off there's no other data on it so that I can have all the cards for my camera as well then I'm gonna move down to the primary flashlight which is my comfort zone scuba land and see here I've got several of these lights some I have on a little soft Goodman style handle and then most of my primaries that I use for salvage either snap on to the helmet or to my full face mask and of course I'll have both of them up and going but I'm going to check the batteries so I'm going to replace all the batteries in make sure they're good and I might even pull the batteries out the night before just so that they don't run down or anything like that but I want to double check all the batteries make sure they're good then I'm going to come down to the comm unit and I want to make sure that my batteries are good in the comm unit typically what I do is I put the batteries in I'll check with the AC connectors make sure everything's good then once again I'm going to pull the batteries out and make sure that I have plenty of spare batteries in the event that say the battery dies or we it floods or anything like that i make sure that i've got spare and backups for it then i'm going to hook the full face mask up and make sure that uh, it breathes fine make sure i don't need to adjust or anything like that i'm going to check all the straps all the way around it make sure that they don't need to be replaced make sure everything's good to go i can even clean the lens if i need to and just check the overall functionality of the mask now once that's done of course it's going to my spare so i'm gonna go to my spare i'll get the flashlight snapped onto it make sure the batteries are good make sure the camera works hold nine yards just do a quick inspection all the way around the mask hold nine yards hook it up to a reg set make sure everything's functioning properly just the way it needs to be once again if one unit goes down of course i can switch over to the other unit and just keep on kicking for the job Next up, of course, is my regulator. Now, I've got a smorgasbord of hoses here, and I need to make sure that everything's good to go, make sure there's no leaks, and make sure I have a backup for everything that I need. Now, I have two identical reg sets. I'm only going to show you one, but this is basically the Ocean Reef first stage here. You guys saw this set in my... Uh, personal rig rundown for 2022. I'm still using the same thing for salvage and public safety work, but I'm basically going to hook it to a cylinder, make sure the IP is good, the cracking's good, and make sure that my gauges, in this case I use the Puck Air dive computer, make sure everything's good, that it can read pressure, all that. And then I've also got several backup second stages that in the event 
so one of these guys go down, I can simply pop this on my hose. It's got a quick disconnect and I can still do the job. Or if I need to go in real quick where there's no hazmat, I can pop this on if I don't need comm units or anything like that. Now, the job that we are doing tomorrow, we don't really need a redundant system simply because we're gonna have multiple divers in the water at one time. But if I need a redundant system, of course I have my gas block here that I can hook a redundant cylinder to. And that way I do not need to remove the full face mask in the in the situation that I have an outer air emergency or something like that. However, I won't be using this tomorrow just because it's not really uh, deemed necessary based off the job that we're doing, but I still will hook everything up, make sure everything's good to go. And that's pretty much it for this reg set, although I've got an identical reg set that I'm gonna check as well. Just make sure that if this one goes down, I can hook the next one up and just keep on kicking. After that, guys, I'm going to move on down to my BCs. And, of course, I've got one primary BC that I use for public safety diving. It is actually this guy right here. So this is a Marez backplate wing. It's a stainless steel backplate. comes in at five pounds. got my salvage fins. And you can tell it's my salvage rig. I've got my two spare... Uh, 50 pound lift bags there. I'm just gonna kind of go over it, make sure all the valves are working, make sure there's no leaks anywhere, make sure it holds air, and just go over it. And yes, I use this day in and day out. I know that it works, but I always try to prepare the night before just so that if I need to do a quick repair, maybe on an inflator valve or something like that, I can do it and not have to worry about it during the job. The BC is probably one of the easiest things that I have to prepare during a job just because I know it's one of the most robust systems I use throughout salvage work. Next, of course, is my dry suit. This will be the dry suit that I'm using uh, tomorrow morning, and you guys saw this. If you saw our dry suit series, you'll know I have two primary dry suits that I use for, uh, say, public safety diving and salvage. This is my Scuba Force Expedition. This will be the suit that I'll be wearing. My backup suit, of course, is down here in my little cabinet, and I will get both of them out and just make sure everything's good to go with them, make sure all the seals are nice and lubricated, make sure the zipper's nice and lubricated, and I'll just test it and just make sure that it's good. I can pump air in, make sure the valves work, make sure there's nothing in the pockets, or in the event that I need a quick deploy situation, there's certain things I may go ahead and stick in the pockets so that I don't actually have to worry about it when I get to the site. This is a pretty planned out salvage that we're doing tomorrow, so it's not that big a deal as far as a quick deploy situation, but I like to go ahead and do this now we may get there tomorrow and it starts raining on us and we can't really lube our seals and stuff like that in the rain so i like to do it when it's still here in the dry get it lubed up get it stored away or stowed away ready to go and then of course i'll be should be fine during the salvage now i do want to make a quick side note um, for tomorrow salvage i am going to be wearing dry gloves um, i've got several questions about how do you wear dry gloves and you wear wrist mounted computers and compasses and all that um, if you watched my rig rundown series from 2022 you'll know i have several different dive computers several different dive watches i have the mares xr um, compass the professional series compass that i wear when i'm out diving when i'm out teaching Typically, I don't wear any of that. When you wear dry gloves like I've got, I've got these big rings that kind of mount to the side of the suit here. So these gloves just kind of mount there. It's very difficult unless you have a computer that's got like a watch style band that can go around. I use the bungee series. It's very difficult to get it to go over that. This is why one of the reasons for public safety diving, I use an air integrated computer slash console that has a built in compass. Even if I have to search, this is a one unit that's going to work every Everything that I need it to do for salvage and public safety work and that's the only thing I use this computer for because it's kind of a combo unit that's going to work best for me so once again after I check my dry suit I'm going to make sure that my gloves are good make sure there's no leaks in that and kind of go from there but hopefully that'll answer some of you guys questions about how do I use a computer and a compass that's wrist mount over these big bulky gloves well I don't typically when I wear this I'm in a public safety or salvage situation and everything I need is in this console mounted computer right here. Next up, of course, is my Pelican box. You guys have seen, I'm sure you're getting sick and tired of me telling you how much I love Pelican, but I've got my own personal Pelican box that I use for public safety and salvage. I also have the Pelican Air Series here that we use just for all of our other gear, but for salvage work, I do use the Protector Series here. This is the uh, 1650 case. I've had this case for more than 25 years. I've never had to replace wheels. I've only had to replace a couple of uh, little clips here but other than that this box has been through everything with me and i absolutely love this box you can see it's kind of got our dive team logo there on it so i'll get everything loaded up packed up stowed away where i need it make sure everything's nice and compact and go through my checklist just to make sure i've got everything i need for the salvage job and of course the last thing that i prepare 
is myself. I want to make sure I get a good night's rest tonight. I want to make sure I've got my head in the right space to actually go out and do a salvage job. And I want to get my game plan. So I've already been on the phone tonight with the rest of our team. I've been on the phone with my co-owner, which is my dad. And we've kind of discussed how we are going to do this. Like I said, guys, you're not going to get to see the salvage tomorrow morning simply because we're filming it for the Weather Channel's Deep Water Salvage TV series. So if you do follow along, you will definitely see this episode come out. You're going to get to see all this equipment on. Um, I do want to kind of state this. I am going to be making a video in the future about the TV series itself. There's certain things that we can't show you here on YouTube. We're under contract. Obviously, there's certain things we can't show until it actually airs. Once it airs, we kind of get free reign, and I do want you guys to see the behind-the-scenes footage of how we do this. I know a lot of you guys have asked in the past, do you fr fabricate these salvages? No, we don't fabricate them. We are truly a commercial dive company. We go out, we do salvage work. There are certain things, however, for the TV series that are scripted. There's certain things that we talk about. There's certain things you see on camera that we wouldn't typically do during a normal salvage. And the reason that we do that is obviously they've got to have content. They've got to have controversy. They got to have something that's going to keep you guys entertained. So there's certain things that you're going to see on the TV show that we wouldn't actually do in the real world. So for you guys, because we are an educational channel and that's how we want to be known as, I want to show you behind the scenes. So I will be making a video in the future of several of the episodes that we've done. And I'm going to basically critique those episodes. And I will let you know, yeah, that was fabricated. That what didn't really happen. Or I'll let you know, yes, that happens. That happens on a regular basis. If it's an emergency situation, sometimes bad things happen and we have to overcome them. So I want you guys to kind of see that in real time by seeing it, of course, through... Uh, behind the scenes footage which unfortunately once again I can't show you any of the footage from the episodes until they air but once they do air I can pluck that footage out and kind of go through a review process of it and say yeah we kind of fabricated that just so you guys know more what real underwater salvage is all about. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you do underwater salvage work, let me know how you prepare for the job and even let me know what type of gear that you wear as well because I'm really interested to see what you guys wear because I learn from you just as much as you learn from me. But guys, I'm gonna go ahead and hop off tonight. I gotta get a good night's rest. We've gotta get up bright and early and meet with the production company and then head out to the dive site to do this salvage job. So stay tuned for Deep Water Salvage on the Weather Channel. You're gonna see several episodes this year with us on it for season three, and you'll definitely get to see this episode as well. This is something that we've been working with the production company on for quite a while, and we're actually gonna be very excited for this one too. We actually get to do quite a bit of acting in this episode, and I really hope Hope you guys enjoy it. But I'm going to go ahead and sign off tonight. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you in the next video.